Hey, welcome back to another video for our chessboard app. In this video, we're going to actually do some work on the button click here. So instead of just a simple message that says you clicked a button, we're going to use the abilities of our board class to set the properties of each cell. So let's go and uh, get started in the code again. So I am looking at form design. I am right clicking and choosing view code. And you can see that I'm in the uh, form one code. So at the bottom, we created a message box in the last video that says, you clicked a button. So here's the goal that we have to accomplish. We're going to, first of all, have to get the row and column number of the button that was clicked. Right now, it's just a mystery, it seems, of all the buttons have the same handler. Then next, we're going to determine the next legal moves on the grid. And then finally, we will update the text on each button so that it will show which ones are legal and which ones are not. So the first one would be kind of a mystery if you didn't see an example. How to get the row and column number of the button clicked. Well, first of all, we need to set something in the properties of the button that will allow us to uh, save some values. So similar to what we did here, this was a setting of the text on the face of the button. So we can set this property called tag. Well, what is a tag? Well, a tag is like the button text, except it's invisible. It doesn't show on the screen, but it is used in the button's memory. How convenient. So I'm going to create, instead of text, I'm going to create a new point and use IJ as its location. So in tag, you can save any kind of a class you like. You want to hide a string, you can have a point, you could have a whole array, you can have a whole bunch of information behind this item called a tag. So now, once we get to the uh, button click, we should be able to pull that tag out and determine the row and column. All right, so the first thing I want to do is to be able to capture which button was clicked. So I'm going to create a new button object and call it clicked button. And I'm going to set it to something called sender. Now, what in the world is sender? So if you look up at the uh, parameters of my function, there is something called a sender. So the sender is the object that was clicked. Now, down here it says, we have an issue though, it says it's a generic object and you told it to be assigned to a button. So an explicit, an explicit conversion exists. Are you missing a cast? Okay, so all of that simply means this, that you are going to promise, cross your heart and hope to die, that sender is a button, and that's the cast. So if you, if you for some reason have a click that comes from something besides a button, like your drop-down list or the label, if you click that and send it into this uh, function, it will crash. So this here, is a promise. It will be a button. I promise, I promise. So now I want to grab the uh, location, uh, the rows and columns. So this is a point. Remember the tag is a point. And I'm going to get it from the clicked button. Once more, I have to promise that this is a point. So let's cast it again. So now we have ourselves a location. Okay, so now I'm going to assign a variable called x and y, and I'm going to get it from the location point. So that's a lot of work, it seems, to get these uh, points casted into the right data type, but it's a great experience for you. So casting from one type to another. Next, I want to be able to define a specific cell called our current cell. And that is the cell that is on the grid. So myboard.grid, and I'm using the locations X and Y for the row and the column. So that pretty much finishes up with our first comment here, that we're going to get the row and column number of our current clicked cell. Now what we're going to do to the next section, which is determine the next legal moves. So that was in my board the dot uh, make or uh, mark next legal moves. There's already a method in the class for that. Now we have a problem though, because it is requiring two parameters. Let's look at the information. It says we are looking for cell and string. So let's start with the word cell. So we have the cell called current cell. Now the string, I'm just going to hard code in the word knight for right now. And so that will determine that we're going to print knights on the screen. All right, the next section is to update the text on each button. So for this, we're going to have to have a double nested for loop again. So we'll do a a for loop using i and j for our variable counters. And inside of this for loop, we're going to check to see if the value in my board has a legal next move property. If it is to, if it is set to true, then let's print the text to be legal. 
And then the next we'll check to see if it's currently occupied. And if it is currently occupied, we will print the word night on the button face. So let's try clicking somewhere. So I click and I get night and legal printed around the edges. If I click night again, you can see that it is printing night and legal in many different locations. Rather confusing. I should be clearing the board and then I should have a better result. So just before I do any uh, assignment, I'm going to set the text of the board to blank. So this will set the text to a default value of empty and then it will print either legal or night afterwards. Okay, so this is looking better now. So when I click here, I get night and night and night. Okay, so we've got the first stage here. It looks like we've got our night working. Uh, if I choose uh, Rook, I still get Knights, so that's still not going to work too well, but it's not too bad. So this is a proof of concept. It looks like we've got ourselves the classes linked up to the actual text that's being printed on the button. So that's a good stopping point for this video.